Okay. Okay. So this is where the pilgrims landed, Plymouth Rock. What could y'all tell me about the geography? Mountainous, right? Okay. There's woods in the background. What can we say about the temperature? It's cold. It's cold. And this is going to be something to deal with life expectancy. Because it's cold, what can we say about the life expectancy? You think it's going to drop. I want you to think about hospitals. No, it's going to go up because, like, what diseases, when it's cold, can't diseases spread? No. So if you think about a hospital, hospitals are always cold so that it basically freezes those pathogens. So now, if I look at this area, it is cold. What's not going to be able to spread? So what's going to happen to life expectancy? It's going to go up. However, when I looked at the Chesapeake, it was what? In the south, it was hot. And what was able to spread? Those diseases like malaria, dysteria, typhoid. So what happened to the life expectancy? It went down. Another thing, in this area it is very cold, and so their beds, they actually have these little boxes that, in, you know we have like beds on mattresses and frames and stuff. They actually created a box, it had hay on the bottom, and it had like a, a down um, pillow on top, which was like feathers to make the bed. And so these Puritan little boxes, they call them, um, is their sleeping quarters. Okay, so they were very tight knit, and so because they were tight knit, they cuddled a lot, and they had a lot of babies. Okay, and why they had 14 plus kids don't cuddle is dangerous. Okay, so we talked about the Great Migration. Y'all had that over 70,000 came to the Americas, but actually only 20,000 of the Puritans landed in New England. Okay. Some of y'all just put the 70,000 and we're done. You're like, that's the end of the first of the sentence. I got to it. But just know about 20,000 Puritans actually get to New England. The others go elsewhere. Their boats don't go the right way on those winds. Again, I always tell you that, uh -oh. oh gosh, what happened to it? Bad Women Make History. That's Anne Hutchinson. You probably went through the book and were like, who's that? Oh, Darth Vader. Darth Vader. <laughs> oh, that's That's Anne Hutchinson right there. And um, we know why she's a dissenter, because what idea did she endorse? Antinomianism, and they're considered her a greater threat because she was going to take down the community solidarity, and she was also very fearful that they were she would take food with her. Rhode Island. So they called Rhode Island the sewer uh, because they put all their, what, there? We're going to see our Puritans will try to deal with the Indians. They will try to convert them at first. And when they don't convert, this will lead to the Pequot Wars. Um, we're going to see that um, some of the Indians will um, surrender. Other Indians will not. And the reason why this happens is because of Western settlement. That they're moving west, their populations are booming, and they need this land. Eventually, the King Philip's War will happen. That will stem the flow. What we're going to look at here is what were the three main industries that we saw in the New England area? This was question 11. Fishing, Fishing wood, 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 lumber, and then fur. Fur, there was fur, but who is that doing that? The Indians. the Indians, right? So what was the main things done by the English? So fishing, lumber, which, and then what? Shipbuilding. Because of this, this means that they had the means to go trade their stuff. Did they want to entirely trade with England? No, because they could get more profit by going to Spain, by going to France. And so one of the things that they would do is they would circumvent these rules and go trade with others. Did that get the crown upset? Yes. So, because they're not following mercantilism, and this is why the Dominion of New England was created. It was created to focus on these areas to make sure that those ships went to where? England, and that they were only buying English goods. Do you think the Puritans are going to like this? No, because what is going to happen to their profits? It's going to go down. And so we're going to see the Dominion of New England will eventually go away, but it was just a monitoring system to make sure that they were trading with English merchants. Eventually I'm going to come and talk about the Dutch and them with the middle colonies. Last time with the South, and we talked about the main groups who came here. We talked about the Scott Irish being last, 
and along the coast it was the English and the slaves, right? But when I look at New England right here, I see that it's all English. So it's gonna be the most homogeneous. Is it tolerant or intolerant, this area? Intolerant, okay? And we know these are people coming through the Great Migration. We're eventually gonna talk about the middle on Friday. What I want us to look at next is the resource chart. Resources do you see beyond lumber, fishing, and shipbuilding? Iron. Iron. Rum. Rum. So we see iron, rum, whaling. So y'all know um, to light the candles at this time, they used to use the blubber from the whales. Okay? Like even then, like the lipsticks and stuff like that used to have blubber from whales in it. Okay. Yes, um, seaweed was used to be in our toothpaste. Like, yeah, we, we use a, oh gosh. Bat poop used to be in Yeah, bat poop, yeah. What the heck? Yeah, well, I'm just not going to tell you anything more. It's all okay. natural. Okay, um, but we see, have, we said this area had rocky soil, right? Yes. Very, not much to grow. But did they create other resources for them to be able to become economically viable? They're gonna have the most shipbuilding and the most trading. And because of this, when the revolution happens, is it gonna happen in the South? It's gonna happen in the area of the shipping because we know they put taxes on stuff, right? And this is gonna set up why the American Revolution happens in places like Massachusetts and Boston. Because that's where all the shipbuilding, the lumber, those industries that are gonna be attacked by the imperial taxation. Is this area going to follow the rules of mercantilism that they have to trade with England? No. They're going to circumvent it, and these are our little rebels. So, was Anne a dissenter? Did she dissent against Puritan ideas? And now I look at the American Revolution. Are these people going to dissent? So, American history, one of the big themes as we go through is we're going to look at dissenters. Anne was a dissenter. Roger Williams was a dissenter. The people in the American Revolution was a dissenter. So is a dissent an American tradition? Yes, because yes, even when I get to the Civil War, was the South dissenting? Mm -hmm. Okay. Even when I get to the hippies in the 60s and the mm -hmm. 70s, a lot of y'all say they're about sex, drugs, and rock and roll, but actually they were dissenting against the government's involvement in the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. They were dissenting against the government's lack of help in the Civil Rights Movement. So this idea of dissent, which is probably synonymous with when your parents tell you to do something today, it's just natural. It is an American <laughs> ideal. Don't justify it to your parents or the cops, I'm dissenting because it's American. They're gonna look at you and think you're crazy. I want you to look at the New England churches. All of the New England churches are what, mainly? Looking, where, based off my colonial groups, where do I have my New England churches? What church are they following? Congregational. That seems weird, but we know if you ever see the word congregational, that means Puritan, which we know are Puritans tolerant or intolerant. intolerant. And only who are getting salvation? The elect, and they had to have what? A conversion experience. And I want you to look down here. What is our biggest church in the Americas? The Congregationalist. I'm going to talk about the Great Awakening next time. I want you all to tell me, just based off this, where are most of our, where are most of our minister schools? What colonial region do we see them in? New England. There's four of the twelve, or four of the nine that are in New England. Because what was the purpose of this area? They were coming here for what motivation? Religious freedom, right? To practice their religion. Could they send their could they send their ministers back to England 
to get an education about how to be a minister. No, because they felt the Protestant church was correct or was it wrong? Wrong, so this is why these universities were created. 